In the previous video, we have two types of intermolecular forces of attraction. Yang pertama, Van der Waals forces dan yang kedua, hydrogen bond. Okay. Uh, Van der Waals forces, kita tahu kita ada dua jenis Van der Waals forces which is um, dipole-dipole dan juga London dispersion forces. Uh, tapi the next type of intermolecular forces of attraction ialah hydrogen bonding. So apa tu hydrogen bonding? Hydrogen bonding ni ialah a strong permanent attraction between molecule, kalau let's say molecule tu, you jumpa je molecule yang ada uh, positively charged hydrogen atom dan juga negatively charged and a high electronegative atom such as fluorine, oxygen dan nitrogen. If let's say ada bond yang uh, menyatukan molecule tersebut, itulah dia hydrogen bond. Okay, so kalau you, you ingat hydrogen bond, you ingat Handphone. Handphone tu apa? Handphone tu adalah molekul yang ada hidrogen dan juga uh, fluorine ataupun hidrogen dan juga ada oksigen ataupun hidrogen dan juga ada nitrogen. Uh, kalau contoh molekul yang ada hidrogen dengan fluorine, uh, macam contoh kat bawah ni lah, which is HF. Contoh molekul yang ada hidrogen dan juga oksigen ialah molekul H2O. Contoh molekul yang ada hidrogen dan juga nitrogen adalah molekul NH3. So, kalau let's say you jumpa saja these molecules and actually the bond ataupun the force of attraction yang mencantumkan molecule yang ada sahaja hydrogen dan juga electronegative atom such as FON, itulah dia hydrogen bond. Okay, the force of attraction, tali ikatan yang mengikat the molecule uh, yang that's this particular molecule adalah hydrogen bond. Okay, so if you look at these examples, okay, if you look at here, kita ada dua dua H2O molecule. So, uh, this is the force attraction yang menggabungkan, di, yang mencantumkan these dua molecule ataupun yang attract these two molecule. So, this kind of force of attraction, we call it as hydrogen bond. Okay, so if let's say for this one pula, you nampak you ada dua molecule NH3. Okay, so and you ada nampak ada titik-titik putus kat situ. Uh, itu adalah nak melambangkan mereka punya force of attraction. So, the force of attraction uh, ataupun the type of intermolecular forces of attraction yang attract these two molecules adalah hydrogen bond. Okay. Next lah, if let's say you ada molecule water H2O dan juga molecule NH3. Uh, uh, you know that this molecule ada nitrogen, ada hydrogen, ni pula ada oxygen dan juga hydrogen and you nampak Kalau let's say ada sahaja bond yang melibatkan hidrogen dan juga oksigen ataupun hidrogen dan nitrogen ataupun hidrogen dan juga fluorine, that kind of intermolecular forces yang attractkan these two molecules adalah hydrogen bond. Nah, macam this one. Ini pun the type of intermolecular forces yang attract uh, these two molecules adalah hydrogen bond. Ini jumpa je hydrogen uh, dan juga electronegative atom such as fluorine, oksigen dan nitrogen. Uh, the type of force of attraction yang combine kan these two adalah hydrogen bond. So, there are three properties of hydrogen bonding that you need to know such as boiling points, solubility of simple covalent molecules and also the density of water and ice. Okay, kalau boiling points, mestilah kita merujuk kepada strength. Okay, the strength of the intermolecular forces ataupun the strength of the hydrogen bond. Okay, sebab semakin kuat the hydrogen bond, uh, semakin susah kamu nak break the bond, that means you need more energy to overcome the stronger forces. Okay, uh, therefore the boiling point will be higher to the one yang ada uh, stronger hydrogen bond. Okay, kalau pasal solubility pula, kita kena tengok uh, pasal ability, okay, ability untuk sesebuah molekul tu, dia boleh uh, form hydrogen bond ke tidak? Okay, kalau dia boleh form hydrogen bond, bermaksud dia soluble. Okay, kalau dia tak boleh form hydrogen bond, bermaksud dia tak soluble. Okay, and then density of water and ice, the key word here yang miss nak tekankan kat sini ialah uh, pasal volume. Okay, uh, 
sebab density kan main uh, density kan is equals to mass over volume tapi in this case kita akan ambil kira factor volume because uh, the higher the volume the more the volume uh, therefore the density akan jadi kurang Uh, so, factor yang main peranan kat sini, volume. Okay, to know more about this, let's continue. Okay, right now, I would like to discuss about the trend of boiling point uh, from group 14 until 17 in the periodic table of elements. So, if you look at the graph here, uh, you'll see that the y-axis um, adalah boiling point, the um, x-axis adalah period. Okay. And then the one yang ada highest boiling point ialah H2O. The one yang ada lowest boiling point ialah CH4. And this is the trend untuk group 14. Uh, the trend ni yang colour purple. And then the trend yang uh, untuk group 15 ialah colour line yang colour hijau ni. Trend for group 16 ialah line yang colour merah. Trend for group 17 ialah line yang colour biru ni. Okay. So, from the figure I would like to discuss about boiling points untuk hydride of group 14. Okay. So, you can see here uh, the trend displays a normal behaviour. Okay. Tak pelik-pelik pun. Normal behaviour. So, you can see that the trend makin lama makin increase from carbon uh, until SN. Okay. Because why? Uh, because the type of intermolecular forces of attraction yang ada between all of these molecule adalah Van der Waals forces sahaja, okay? There is no hydrogen bonding, okay? Tiada langsung, tak ada hydrogen bonding pun dekat uh, setiap molecule di group 14 ni. Okay, and then boiling point ni dia increase uh, across the CH4 sampai SNH4 sebab kenapa? Because of factor molar mass. Okay. Uh, factor molar mass. Bila molar mass increase, you know that the Van der Waals will become stronger. Uh, therefore, you know that kalau molar mass increase pun, you will know that the size akan jadi bigger. Okay. So, if you look at here, uh, across this one, okay, uh, across the period, the molar mass uh, increase, therefore the molar, uh, the, the size will be increased and the Van der Waals forces will be stronger. So, bila Van der Waals forces stronger, uh, therefore you will need more energy to overcome the forces and therefore uh, the boiling point increases, okay? Therefore, the boiling point increases across uh, group 14, okay? Across period dekat group 14. Okay. Next, I nak discuss pasal trend on group uh, 15, 16 and 17. So, if you look at the graph dekat sebelah ni, um, going down the group, okay, going down the group, the boiling point increases. Except H2O, HF and also NH3. Sebab apa? Okay, mula-mula kita bagi tahu okay. The increase in the boiling points for the hydrides for each period uh, in the group is because of the increase in the Van der Waals forces of attraction. Because uh, going down the group, the molecular size increases. So, bila molecular size increase, kan the Van der Waals forces will become stronger. Bila Van der Waals forces stronger, makanya you need more energy to overcome the stronger forces. Therefore, the boiling point will increase going down the group. Uh, tapi macam kalau if tak melibatkan, uh, if tak melibatkan NH3, H2O dan HF, uh, the hydrogen bonds tak ada lah. Okay, so orang punya uh, peningkatan pun macam lebih kurang sekata je. Okay, tapi apa yang menyebabkan anomalous dekat uh, peningkatan yang pelik dekat H2O, HF dengan NH3 ni? Because dekat group 15, 16 and 17 ni, um, ada hydrogen bonds. Okay, hydrogen bonds exist dekat H2O, HF dan juga NH3. Tiga-tiga ni ada hydrogen bond type of intermolecular forces. And if you want to know hydrogen bond, punya type of intermolecular forces is stronger than Van der Waals forces. Okay. Kalau kita tengok dekat graph tadi, actually H2O 
has the highest uh, boiling point compared to HF dan juga NH3. Padahal, uh, actually kalau nak ikutkan, the strength of hydrogen bonding ni, dia depends pada polarity of the bond. Kalau kalau dia depends pada polarity of the bond, supposedly HF is the most polar molecule. Okay, Kenapa HF is the most polar molecule? Ataupun more polar compared to H2O dengan NH3 because fluorine is the most electronegative atom. Macam mana tahu fluorine is the most electronegative atom? Sebab if you look at the Pauling scale, you will know that the fluorine uh, has the highest scale uh, daripada semua atom dekat periodic table of elements sebanyak 4.0 ok so um, fluorine is the most electronegative atom sebabkan fluorine is the most electronegative atom therefore HF molecule is the most polar molecule compared to H2O dan juga NH3 tapi di, walaupun HF ni the most polar kenapa H2O still winning? why? because H2O molecule ni dia boleh buat boleh buat for hydrogen bonding per H2O molecule. Kiranya H2O ni actually uh, dia boleh form more hydrogen bonding. Okay. Reason why H2O punya boiling point is greater than HF because H2O dia boleh form more hydrogen bond compared to HF ok, sebanyak berapa? sebanyak 4 kalau HF pula boleh um, apa tu, form sebanyak 2 hydrogen bonding je per HF molecule kalau H2O, dia boleh form uh, 4 hydrogen bonding per molecule per H2O molecule compared to HF ok um, tetapi uh, kalau reason kenapa H2O ada higher boiling point than HF because uh, H2O boleh form more hydrogen bond per molecule compared to HF. Kalau nak cakap pasal kenapa hydrogen bond HF is greater than NH3, you can say that um, HF is more polar, is a more polar molecule, more polar molecule compared to NH3, okay? Uh, so, kalau reason kenapa HF ni the more polar than NH3 pula because HF is more polar than NH3. Therefore, HF has a higher boiling point uh, because HF ada stronger hydrogen bonding compared to NH3. Uh, so, you kena tahulah nak kalau let's say nak buat perbandingan kenapa H2O dia punya boiling point lagi tinggi daripada HF is because H2O boleh form more hydrogen bond per molecule compared to HF. Kalau HF pula dia ada uh, apa punya boiling point strong uh, lagi tinggi daripada NH3 because HF is a polar molecule, more polar than NH3. Therefore, dia punya hydrogen bond is stronger. Okay, dia punya... Hydrogen bond of HS mole HF molecule is stronger compared to NH3. To conclude about uh, physical properties boiling point di dalam intermolecular forces of attraction. Okay, actually the boiling point uh, untuk molecule yang ada hydrogen bond type of intermolecular forces lagi tinggi dia punya boiling point dia compared to kepada molecule yang ada van der Waals type of IMF, okay. So, hydrogen bond, sebab kenapa hydrogen bond, dia punya intermolecular forces of hydrogen bond is stronger than van der Waals forces, okay. So, the stronger the bond, okay, the stronger the intermolecular forces, more energy is needed to overcome the stronger force, therefore, the higher the boiling point, okay. Uh, and then, kalau you nak tahu the order of IMF strength, okay, you know that hydrogen bond is stronger than van der Waals forces. Okay, tapi van der Waals forces pula ada dua jenis van der Waals forces. Uh, therefore, dipole-dipole punya interaction in van der Waals forces uh, will be uh, stronger daripada London dispersion force type of van der Waals forces. When we talk about solubility, 
we are talking about the molecule tu punya ability untuk form hydrogen bonding. Kalau molecule tu dia boleh form hydrogen bonding bermaksud dia soluble in water. Kalau dia tak berjaya nak form hydrogen bonding bermaksud dia insoluble in water. Okay, macam sebagai contoh water. Water kan H2O. So, water is actually a very good solvent for liquids and gases. Sebab kenapa? Sebab water dia boleh form hydrogen bonds, okay, uh, with another water molecules. Keyword dia kat sini ialah, dia boleh, ability dia untuk form hydrogen bonds, okay. Uh, kalau ammonia pula, ammonia ni apa? Ammonia ni adalah NH3. This molecule NH3 ammonia. Ammonia pun dia soluble in water. Sebab kenapa? Ammonia dia boleh form hydrogen bonds dengan water molecule. Kenapa ammonia dia boleh form hydrogen bonds dengan water molecule? Because ammonia itself ialah uh, molecule yang ada nitrogen dan juga hydrogen. So, dia boleh form hydrogen bonding. So, kalau any molecule yang uh, yang boleh buat hydrogen bonding ialah molecule yang you ingatlah handphone yang ada H handphone. Okay. Uh, molecule yang ada Uh, boleh buat bond hydrogen bersama fluorine, uh, oksigen dengan nitrogen ialah molekul yang boleh buat hydrogen bonding lah. Okay, so in this case ammonia dia ada hydrogen and also bila dia nak uh, soluble in water, dia able to do hydrogen bonding with a water molecule. Water molecule kan H2O, so yang ni H, yang ni O. Uh, so dia boleh buat hydrogen bonding. Okay, this another ammonia pula. Nitrogen ni dia boleh melekat dengan hydrogen of the water. So, dia boleh buat hydrogen bonding. So, since dia boleh buat hydrogen bonding, that's why ammonia pun dia soluble in water. Okay, most organic compounds actually insoluble in water kecuali compound yang boleh, apa tadi Miss cakap keyword dia. Kecuali kalau compound tu, dia boleh uh, form Hydrogen bond with H2O. Kalau let's say molecule tu boleh form hydrogen bond with water, therefore the compounds will be soluble. Okay, alcohol dengan carboxylic acid pun dia soluble in water sebab apa? Sebab ada OH groups yang di mana dia boleh buat hydrogen bond bersama water. Okay, uh, so if you look at here, This diagram, uh, this is alcohol group uh, punya organic compound. Dia mampu nak buat hydrogen, dia boleh nak buat hydrogen bond dengan water molecule. So that's why alcohol dengan carboxylic acids are soluble in water. Okay. Tetapi not all organic compounds yang ada NH2 group, amine group ataupun alcohol and carboxylic acid groups or H groups soluble in water. Sebab apa? Uh, sebab, okay. Actually, kat dalam organic compound ni, kita akan ada hydrophilic area dan juga hydrophobic area. Hydrophobic area ni ialah kawasan yang di mana uh, mereka suka love, love air, love water. Hydrophobic, phobic maksudnya dia macam phobia lah kan. Uh, phobic kan macam phobia. Okay, gelap sangat lah pula. So, phobic ni kan dia macam phobia. So, dia tak suka. Dia takut air. So, uh, hydrophobic area ni ialah area yang ada hydrocarbon. Okay, semakin banyak carbon, semakin besar dia punya hydrophobic uh, area. So, bila semakin besar hydrophobic area, semakin tak soluble lah uh, organic compound tersebut. Okay, uh, sebab bila macam ni lah. Uh, semakin besar the molar mass of the organic compound yang ada OH2 dan OH dan juga NH2 uh, semakin uh, kecil dia punya hydrophilic area okey semakin besar dia punya hydrophobic area so since hydrocarbons are insoluble in water the solubility uh, will be decrease bila molar mass of the organic compound increase. Macam mana molar mass of organic compound increase? Molar mass dia increase bila kamu tambah carbon. Bila carbon tu bertambah daripada 5 dan ke atas. Okay, kalau C10 lagi lah tak soluble in water. Okay, now Miss nak cakap pasal effects of hydrogen bond on physical properties uh, which is about the density of water and ice. Okay, water and ice ni dua-dua ada H2O molecules. Cuma water 
uh, adalah H2O molecules di, di dalam liquid form. Ais pula adalah H2O molecules di dalam solid form. Okey, dua-dua ada H2O molecules. That means um, kalau H2O kita tahu lah H2O ni um, type of bond yang H2O molecules buat between another H2O molecules adalah hydrogen bond. But if you want to talk about the density, okay, I would like you to remember the formula of density, which is density is equal to mass over volume. Di mana um, kalau you nak compare between density of water and ice, you can uh, guna point volume. Okay, you need to use the point volume. Okay, sekarang ni miss nak compare between density of ice compared to water. Ice actually the less dense less dense than water okay sebab kalau if let's say you order air lah pun sekali kan dekat cafe tu you order milo ice ke ataupun you order you order apa eh you order air ais kosong lah uh, so bila you order ais ais kosong you nampak tak kan ais tu terapung Walaupun mereka sama-sama H2O molecule. Yang liquid H2O tu ada H2O molecule. Yang ice ni pun dia pun ada H2O molecule. Cuma H2O molecule di dalam solid form. Okay. Tetapi you know that ice is less dense than water. Disebabkan oleh apa? Faktor utamanya ialah because of hydrogen bonding in H2O molecules di dalam solid form. Because di dalam solid form the H2O molecules okay akan hold the uh, H2O molecules in an open structure, okay? In ice, the H2O molecules are hold together in open structure. Okay. Open structure ni, dekat open structure ni, H2O molecules ni, uh, dekat ice ni, dia boleh form another four more hydrogen bondings with another H2O molecules tetrahedrally. So, if you look at the um, diagram here this is H2O molecules in an open structure di mana this H2O dia boleh form another four more hydrogen bonding tetrahedrally okay only in open structure dekat ice okay special pada ice okay this kind of special arrangement yang open structure punya arrangement ni akan membuatkan um, ice ataupun solid H2O molecules ni ada Greater, have greater volume. Ada punya volume increase. So, kalau if you refer kepada equation um, density equals to mass over volume, kalau volume increase, density decrease. Uh, so, bila volume increase, density decrease. That's why ice dia less dense than water. Sebab itulah ice terapung. Uh, walaupun uh, dia berada di berada di um, apa tu bersama dengan H2O liquid molecules. Okay, right now Miss nak explain pula uh, pasal density of water compared to ice. Okay, macam mana kamu dapat liquid water molecule is because okay, bila ice tu dia mencair Okay, bila dia cair, dia akan adalah liquid H2O molecules kan? Dia jadilah air kan? Ha. Uh, bila, when ice melts, okay, bila ice ni dia mencair, H2O molecules yang dekat dalam solid tu, uh, dia akan jadi liquid phase. Okay? Dia akan turn to liquid phase. Bila dia nak turn to liquid phase, that means some of the hydrogen bonds will be broken. Okay? Bila some of the hydrogen bonds will be broken, this will make the uh, water molecules to be more compactly arranged resulting decrease in volume. Okay, so bila uh, some of the hydrogen bonds will be broken, uh, the volume of the H2O molecules will be decreased. So, kalau if you rujuk balik dekat formula, uh, density is equal to mass over volume. So, when you know that Bila volume decreases, that means density increase. Okay. Uh, bila volume decrease, density increase. Therefore, that's why water dia ada higher density than ice. 